فون بتاع ميوت All right, good night, good night, and welcome back um, to the show, guys. The thing called the Everyday People Belize. You know, it's Monday night, and we're bringing it into your living room. So we're bringing in the discussions. We talk about things that you know we want our general public to know. Um, and tonight, I have three guests with me. Right, brother Patrick, brother George, and brother Will with me. Um, here on the show, you know, and you guys can read at the bottom in the description um, some of the stuff that we will be talking about um, tonight here on the show called The Everyday People Belize. So, for questions, remember you can write your questions down in the comments if you have any particular question you want to address tonight, and we'll try our best to respond to them. Um, but definitely, I want to give way to the gentlemen to start the discussion, right? And, you know, we have a good lineup tonight when it comes to the various topics that we want to cover, um, ranging from the Stevie Doors, the whole BTL um, fiasco that is happening, um, all the way to corruption, right? And so we know we're discussing points that are um, up, to, up to the time in Belize, right, that you guys want to hear about. I will try to break it down as much as we can. So, Brother Pat, gentlemen, good yeah. night. Greetings, greetings. Glad to be here. Brother Judge. Yes, yes. yes. Good night, um, Belize. Good night, PG. Um, as you had said, uh, Brother Marcel, it's everyday people, and these are yeah. everyday issues that we are treating with. And when I say we, I mean us from the Belize Progressive Party. Mm -hmm. um, I am the Secretary General. Um, uh, Brother Pat will come back and tell you who he is. Yeah. And I'm sure that Brother Will will announce who he is um, when we pass the mic to him. Good. All right, so we could start with um, Brother Pat then. Yeah, greetings, Patrick Rogers. I'm the chairman of the Belize Progressive Party. And as always, we try to add value to the discussions where they take place in the country. So that's what I'll try and yeah. do here tonight for you all. So um. we. We, we could probably start out with the first topic that has to do um, more with the Stevie Doors, you know, the situation with the Stevie Doors in the city. You, maybe you can expand a little bit more on that for us and for the viewers. All right. Um, basically, for, to put it in perspective, what we have is uh, David and Goliath fight, brothers and listeners. Um, the Prime Minister is doing one down low and Burning almost ethnic spin on this thing by saying that the, the cane farmers have to pay 65 cents out of every dollar that the stevedores are being paid. That is crazy, right? Because what happens is that BSI ASR has an agreement for profit sharing of 65 35 ratio, which is to say that after they end on milk the company. Because just as one example, if you all watch the news tonight, please, you would see William Neal speaking as an official officer of ASRBSI. But there was a time while he was being paid by the government of Belize to be working at UB while he was sitting as a morning talk show host on one of the main media houses. And he received one check every month as a uh, public relations consultant from ASR BSI. Now, 65 cents out of every dollar we paid to them public relations consultants, always also you could say that the cane farmers they pay. The point that they try and make every bloated expenditures where BSI spends, where ASR control, where BSI they spend, it's 65 cents in the cost the farmer. But for the Prime Minister to put one spin on it, like that is the only bloated expenditures that the, you know, the, the, the producer has to pay out, is crazy. Because I bet you each one of them media house, I can't prove this Belize, but this is the way these big companies work, BNE, all of them. They retain these talk show hosts and they listen to the money so that they deflect any negative comments that comes yeah. their way about the issues of the day that might affect their 
they don't like to be shamed, you see, big people don't like to be shamed. So, uh, I'm sorry if it digress, but it, it, it's important because the fight really is that BSI, they try to get out of paying one severance to the steeper doors for handling sugar, and sugar comes in two kind, right? Raw sugar export, where I want to say the crane come down and pick up from the barge and loan it to the next barge as like brown sugar kind of, mm. look. It's not processed beyond that, right? So they call it raw sugar. And then they have direct consumption sugar, which they ship out in at the crocus bag there, the whatever, 100 pounds, 55 pounds, sucks. Those are shipped in containers. So then they want continuous ship through the port of Belize. But the raw sugar is going to be shipped now through Big Creek. And if I could just help add clarity to this situation, Belize, what happens is that the creek, if you recall, was just one private banana creek, right? I yeah. mean, port for ship out bananas. That's all it was. The big banana interest, private port. Now, when BNA got oil coming out of Belize, <laughs> one deal was struck where the oil got through Big Creek. What should I mean? Never happened. So, for appease ports of Belize, the then Prime Minister made one memorandum of agreement with the two big PUP to fight now, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you, who was the then Prime Minister? Said Musa, you yeah. see. But then the Lucas Pat, the port was privatized to in 2004. The oil came around 2005, so by 2006, look back because I look for got a big creek. Mm. You see? And and it shouldn't have been gone, sir. Because it makes sense for, I mean when the oil come and reach Belmapan Junction there with the Hummingbird Highway. There are only fifty miles to Billy City. But yet they gone all the way to Big Creek. To Big Creek. It not make no sense, you see, but it, <laughs> when big people make deal it makes sense, right? Then with the figure they may run pipeline, all kind of thing be any the figure. Um but uh, the, the point is to appease two big PUP where they fight because then, you know, big quick, they're really ZMT, if you don't know, right? The, the Z that they face, the real players are M and T, Mike Duncan and Tony Savani. So they control that big quick operation. Yeah. One PUP, one UDP. That's what all the, the big game set up, right? So whichever party they in there, and got back it if they deal with that. So Tony Savani, Lucas, but two of them, they haggle. So it's an hour look. Anything else other than oil we got through the big creek, any business where you lose a port, we the government will have to compensate you for that. So that is what the Stevador beef is all about, you know. Yeah. That the port of Belize had one guarantee from the government of Belize to not lose any business to Big Creek and if it did the government of Belize would have to compensate ports of Belize and thereby, you know, settle the Stevador beef. So what the Stevador is asking which, for, which really means the taxpayers, yeah, pretty much yes. What the the, the Stevadors are asking for is that the rule of law to prevail in this country. There must be legal certainty for business to take place, right? Nobody want invest in one climate where today government make one guarantee, one agreement with you, and the next government will come in and say, oh, yeah. <laughs> they never we that because they never gone that the house can legislate it. You see, this is the problem when we have this parliamentary democracy where we've, we've seen this happen with the Universal Health Services, where, where the Prime Minister and the Attorney General sign on to an agreement and they say, no, even above and threshold, it should have begun under the House. And Well, what happened in the end? The higher courts outside this country still rule that it needs to be respected. It needs to be respected, Belize. You could say, you know, um, whatever, whatever. Well, the government of Belize could go try Sue Ralph, and, I mean, I'm Syed and the Attorney General in name, but the government's still responsible for what the government signed. And the government is the government. So uh, what, what Johnny Bersano is doing is wrong, 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 wrong. He's trying to say what Syed agreed to do. <laughs> I, I don't need to back that up, you see. Yeah. And then Ports of Belize. <laughs> Ports of Belize as we said, was placed in a receivership when Lucas Pat got into trouble. He got and borrow here, there, and everywhere for a lot of investments. And Michael Ashcroft lent to through one group for bail him out. So they want group bail him out. So they want group where Michael Ashcroft control mm -hmm. will actually have the, the port in receivership. Now, in any other country, believes the way one receivership works, they want to retire loop for a few years. 
the, the creditors may are sending who they want to send in, or a real receiver that goes in there and manage that business properly and mm -hmm. pay off that creditor. When they don't pay off the creditor, if you hand back that business to the owner. Doesn't work that way in Belize, except for kudos to Cedric Flowers, who he took the Quayo distillery out of receivership after paying seven million in seven years. He gave up that company yeah. to the, the kids. The father had already died. That's the way receivership should be run, Belize. But here, because there's no penalties when you broke laws, and you know there's no fiduciary responsibility, no antitrust law, none of that. We see receivership ending up yeah, owning but, but these that is what businesses. I was going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah, go I was ahead. going to ask you about antitrust. We but don't have that in ask you, um, In the U.S., I know we have these antitrust laws where yes, it could um, never happen. a big corporation, or in this case, a big man, could be as big as he wants. And this big man that we have is actually bigger than the government. Yeah. He, he controls uh, both of the mass parties. My direct question to you would be whether at this juncture, um, the Stevie Doors, in your estimation, would have a legal leg to stand on because we know morally they're being wrong. Certainly, certainly. Because they have, I believe, legitimate expectation. Uh, certainly. So do, do they, in your estimation, have a legal leg to stand on? Certainly. And in my estimation, that is the only course to go. Because <laughs> if you look at how crazy this thing is, Belize, there was a time when if you were to be sitting with the stevedores the way I did on a couple of times as their financial advisor across from the Ports of Belize team to try and negotiate, right? Mm -hmm. um, you would have seen Tux Vasquez as the lead receiver. He was named the receiver by the Ashcroft Group. And then you would have seen Brother Will with Buddy, Major Lai Jones, sitting on Tux's right-hand side as one of key advisors over there for the ports of Belize Limited, the private company, right? Now, where are those two gentlemen sitting today? Well, I could tell you, the regulator in all of this, who should be there to help the Steve Adora and Garden back and thing, the regulator and government behalf is the Belize Port Authority. Well, guess who is the new commissioner of ports heading the Belize Ports Authority? No other than Major Lai Jones, you see? So how Belize okay. work. Yeah. And then Tom okay. Vasquez now sits on Port Authority Board as well. I understand. I could be wrong, but I understand he sits on the Belize Port Authority. So here they go from sitting across the table as the private entity where you know the, the Steve Adores have to try negotiate with and have to bring in the Labour Commission and all of that because they, they're very disrespectful and rude, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um now they have been moved over to the regulator. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. When Dr. Geoffrey with okay. the Steve Adores, Ashcroft bringing foreigners to replace him as, you know, the, the, the negotiating team. So the deck stuck against the Steve Adores. Yeah. The Prime Minister now respect the 2006 agreement of the former uh, Said Musa government and, and saying, well, they're not there for do anything anyway. The ports are believed for push this issue. Yeah. And ports are believed not to push the issue. So therein lies the question, right? That all them big oligarchs in bed together and all for what? It's the final straw in union busting Belize. When I said the teachers never wrong because the teachers represent the brains, the collective wisdom of all them beautiful, brilliant teachers we have who educate all our way, all our liars, doctors, everybody come through teachers, all right? Now yeah. get it twisted. The collective wisdom of that body I, uh, people in this country can never be wrong. You're not bet against the teachers. But what happened? The Prime Minister act like you know, unreasonable. Everybody have to take this pill. Uh, rare, rare, rare. Well, welcome to the bloody CEO then where they condone all of this, where they reward yeah. the yeah. they reward the Prime Minister for giving nature. You see? But I'm uh, sorry if you digress, but I've been holding my for a while. Yeah. But um, the, the, the truth is, everything is connected. And where the tech place is that the brain's gone. The PSU were the body because they then really could shut down the government, brother judge, as you well know, coming from the PSU, then the like revenue collectors. If they not collect right. revenues, the government shut down. So then that the body. Right. But the, the prime minister and the government, 
paint them as being complicit to 12 years of UDP corruption. They were right there benefiting from it, the Prime Minister said, and oh, they're not got no credibility. And so the PSU kind of just get box on the side, side. non-factor. So what's left now that the muscle, the stevedores, that the real muscle. Any country you go, the stevedores wow. exist on one motto. Cut we in or cut it out, right? On the kind of the exploit with resources, people they pay with labor cheap yeah. and everything else. And now the product figure out, well, cut we in. And you know what? Pay we where you pay them one for the same work up there or not. Now then they haggle about how much we stevedores they get paid. How much you think longshoremen get paid up now? Any other European countries, Canada, the US, any one of them? Take one guess. If you're there anyway under one 30, 40 US an hour, you're there way, way off. Because they understand the nature, the physical nature of the work, the risk of getting in danger, shot in career, everything. So they pay them well, more. Well, but, well, Brother Pat, um, I hope I know some of the line here. But it seems to me, listening to the Prime Minister, he made mention of two issues that I found a bit disturbing. First of all, he said, and I want you to weigh in on this, he basically said that uh, the business migrating south, the sugarcane business migrating south, um, is a function of a lot of modernization yeah. um, in terms of the services and, I guess, infrastructure. He did mention those words, but the inference is that they did not modernize. He's and right. I think it's an unfair statement because the stevedores has nothing to do with the investment. Yeah. They hold no infrastructural, uh, they are owners of nothing. They yeah. are just participating in terms of labor. And yeah. it seems to me, uh, the prime minister in his narrative seemed to be a kind of front man for whom I call the great white shark. You know, mm -hmm. a great white shark uh, basically gobbles up everything. Yeah. And so he doesn't seem to be speaking for the people of Belize. On the one hand, he's saying, well, too bad you guys didn't uh, modernize, which is an unfair thing to say because yeah. it's misleading. The stevedores has nothing to do in terms of upgrade of technology. No, yeah, and I think that right that in that, to be, that, that, needs to be, that that needs to be explained to people. Yes. You know, you the see? second thing he basically said, is the arithmetic of it. I know they worry about, oh no, I don't worry about 5,000 cane farmers. And I'm saying, but sir, you are not the prime minister of the North. <laughs> Hasn't you gotten it in your head yeah. that you are the prime minister of Belize and you're supposed to represent the national interest and the national interest includes people from Belize city, including uh, at least, as you have said, brother, about 500, David Doors and probably counting. And so, you know, I find his narrative to be um, uncouth and I find it to be unbecoming of the Prime Minister. If if these gentlemen earnings and their jobs are in jeopardy, but apart, you are a man in a management position, Brother Willis, uh, Brother Marcel is also a man, a senior man. Yeah. If I am going to put somebody out of jobs or out of earning, then there's something called retooling. So I can't just talk about tourism or happen and why maybe not. No, 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 no. You have to provide the enabling environment yeah. if you think that the stevedores will have to find another way earning. Yeah. You have to train them. You have to provide uh, loans. You have to provide grants. So I, I but I, I want you to weigh in on that. Those were just yeah, my, no, certainly. My, my observation at this particular point. Yeah. Certainly. All right. You have to understand that I, I, n I never got to look at, I wanted to, but I never got a copy of the privatization document. If you recall, the BSI had already sold off their bulk storage facility, the brown sugar, mm -hmm. uh, right there by the tourism village there in Belize, brown sugar parking lot is actually wife. being used for. Yeah. So that was done before the privatization of the port. So when the port was privatized, everybody and then granny and grandpa assumed that there was a, a clause somewhere in there that required this new privatized port to build a bulk storage facility mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. There was talk of it, Belize, but Everybody knew that Luke was pushing this Royal Caribbean cruise line port where he got up the Miami got signed. 
but then time we made the holler but what about the bulk storage facility we need to be built before any cruise terminal port go there so from then we were calling for the bulk storage facility because it was needed for the port to continue in a being one port right it's lacking in our bulk storage facility that should have been first on the line for any new developer that would have given been given that port privatized now i can't say if that clause was in there should have been in there that aside yes the prime minister is right the the, the port should have built the bulk storage facility they're not bsi if it built yeah, it they're yeah. not bsi land you see so when BSI tell me that then, then they build something that big trick, then the other things will make I scratch my head. So why then couldn't build it that Billy City then? If yeah. That, you understand? Because yeah. I did I did look at the business standpoint now, but right? People, one I think where I just find out by the part is that the BSI is actually borrowing that money from IDB to <laughs> build that um, facility. They're not even for their own money. So if the bank is responsible to, they would have look out for the Stephen Wars. Well, you know, the, to me, because time to go, I have to move on to other subject yeah, matters. Yeah, yeah, to me, I think the fix, the fix is that the NTUCB needs to go down there and make sure the quick port unionize here, yeah? because that is the crux of the matter. Yeah. Well, then what could get to it? Yes, you see, because we last set up where you have to get 50% plus one at the workforce to say they want to be under a collective bargaining agreement to make you unionize. That is very difficult if you put the onus on the employer if you say anybody over 20 employees or whatever, 60% need to be unionized, then you could penalize employers who not employ unionized workers. Just want food for thought for Belize mm-hmm. going forward now. Yeah, definitely. The port needs to be unionized. Cut that cheap labor, then they run from, yeah. and then they try run down the, the big, big port. But if you know, could check around the world, stevedores are paid big money, big, big, big money, all right, because of physical work. Even Amazon, if you check Amazon, pay $19 US an hour for warehouse work, over $15 an hour for storefront work. Why? Because they know physical work, more demanding. You know, he, he bring more risks, so they pay you more. I'm not saying that uh, because fifteen dollars at the minimum wage uh, that the US right now believes fifteen dollars US, right? Yeah. So they pay more than minimum wage for physical work. All right, all right, all right. Good. I mean, nice input. I, I'm hoping you know the, the viewers get a chance to um, understand a different um, a different side to this thing now as it pertains to the stevedores there in Belize City, right? And see how big this thing is. Um, but we definitely want to move on and I want to get some input from Bar- from Brother Will um, concerning the mining in Chickabool, right? That's taking place. Yeah, well, I know that the uh, timing and I, I know that we could uh, get a lot more knowledge from Brother Pat. Yeah, Steve. definitely. But before, like I said, going into this, that remind Belizeans that look, this is uh, this we hear about the stevedores and not look at it as a Belize city thing, look at it as a national issue because at the end of the day, it is a national issue. To make it just a south side issue of Belize City, all of us Belizeans from Rio Hondo to Sarstone should be familiar with the struggle that the stevedores are in right now. And we need to support the stevedores. Yeah. And we want to call upon the stevedores to, you know, the other day I put a, a post on my Facebook page, or on the BPP Facebook page, where it said the stevedores need to be like the Taliban, where gone up and basically defeated the trillions of dollars that the U.S. pumped into Afghanistan. And my point was that they did that because of the support of the people. So once you got the support of the people, you no know, matter how many millions Ashcraft will come with, if people are united, then the people will win out. And that was the, uh, that was the point of my post. A lot of people took it a different way. <laughs> so, again, I just want to say that, like, look, we as Belizeans, need it is our duty as Belizeans to stand in solidarity with the stevedores yeah um now about the chicky bull right into the chicky bull where you have the boyton um gold mining um industry taking place and it's totally that 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 are like you know sucking out the destroying the lungs of belize the chicky bull like almost everybody party person that this country drink that water yeah. from the chicken bowl. So we benefit from it. The clean air, we benefit from it. How many Belizeans 
have benefited from the goal that came out of the Chiki Bowl. Anybody yes, know how many of us have said, man, that due to the goal that come out of the Chiki Bowl, yeah. my life is better. We don't have that. You have a few very small minority of the Lizards who will benefit from this, who go in there and just basically rape the forest and destroy it. Where all of us, all of us breathe in here, all of us drink good water that come from the Chiki Bowl. Yeah. But because greed get into it, now we're gonna allow one 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 gold mining company to go in there and destroy it. I think we as Belizeans need to stand up against these atrocities that's being committed against the environment. We really need to take a stand. And again, I mean we as the Belize Progressive Party have called for the head of the DOE to be removed, but it seems like they are so in bed the P UDP, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? They are one of the same. There is absolutely hardly any difference between the PUP and the UDP. You see, I mean, if you look out who the, yeah. club, the Boyton Company, you know, there is no difference, and that's why Belizeans really, really need to wake up. Because right now, they touch, uh, but really, they affect every Belizean. When you destroy the lungs of the rainforest, yeah. the lungs of Belize. Which give us that clean air. So, in as Belize and Belize. But I will. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I got a question for you. Yeah. WC Fields said two things that are mem memorable in terms of the context of tonight's conversation. And 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 I have to use this one with baby bread. Um, WC Fields says, "A sucker is born every minute." That's what he said. He also said, follow the money. He just follow the money. And so my question to you, Brother Will, is who is Boyton Mining or was it Boyton Chemical? Yeah, What's the name of the concern I think that it's is Boyton mining the... Boyton um, Mining. The Chiki Boat. I think that Boyton Mining Company. Yeah, I think that Boyton Mining and called. Um, yeah, who are they? Yeah, the because you know... The composition, um, right? I didn't hear about them before. Yeah. Now then the Bill Road, are they PUP connected? Who <laughs> I mean that's connected. the way Belize work. It's P U D P connected. Yeah. They are one P -P and the same. Yeah. Um as far okay. as I know as far as I know, uh Francis Gag at one point made a try the song gold panning in the area and Mr. Boyton yep. has been there doing gold for a while. Over now, 20 years, yeah. The, okay. These are, these are um, you know, the Belizeans of more European descent look than the rest of, you know, light skin, light eye, and things like that. So yeah. they are facilitated easy, I you say. Get one mining permit, right? I, I got brothers who know the gold that they will want to go up, they still go pan it, but yeah. they will never be allowed to do that. The Guatemalans and they got illegally as brother will state yeah, yeah. the report and um that, that one problem i mean you know but thank god for you, the you know leader. why you know how the guatemalans they get their brothers is the fact that the same boyton companies right they begin to bring in the guatemalans who they could pay leave less the and they teach pay. them the trade <laughs> Yeah. And, the <laughs> and when the Guatemalans realize, look, you know what, the people of the PA, we right, we go and do this for ourselves, for ourselves yeah. right? Yeah, right? We, and we, then we, they start to bring for their own people in and well, go, you see. But yeah. that this company, just like when they have been at the port of Big Creek, you know, they don't want to pay the stevedores their wages, so they go and go get migrants to work in at the port of Big Creek, right? I mean, you look at anybody who they work but, there, all of them, a lot of them, they're they, they not they no unionized or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, they're definitely right. for cheaper labor. You know, you know everything, even in you know, the um, banana industry, you know, you have um, people that are non Belizeans are working there because yeah, of the cost of labor. This destroying the environment. Yeah. Well, well, well you see, Brother Will, I, I just wanted to say that as the Secretary General, in terms of me sort of organizing the topics for tonight, and I don't know that we're going to get through all of them. No, I don't think we'll. Um, I want to say and remind Belize, and uh, this is not a campaign show, but I just want to remind listeners um, generally that there's a UDP way and there's a PUP way of doing things, and then there's a right way. And so, by the way, when I ask you who are involved, 
and we don't necessarily know the details of it. Um, I want to say that um, I definitely agree with your spiel that there are ecological and environmental consequences to having mining on the head headwaters of yeah. one of the biggest watersheds in Belize, definitely. But I also want to say that also very significantly, there might be the head of corruption, might, and I use the word might, because I think it needs to be researched and we have to find out how people involved and where it leads to, because that is one topic that I want to touch on. But the other thing I wanted to say, Brother Will, is that when you mentioned that we, and I do know that us as a political party had written to the government to ask that we remove the head of the DOE, in a sense, um, if you understand the structure of the public service, um, it's very, very complicated. What has happened is that there are two sets of employees for the government of Belize. There are the professional classes, and this would include the head of DOE, and then there are the political classes of, of um, government workers. And the political classes are the ministers, the ministers of state, and the CEOs. These are the political classes of people. And what they have done over the years is that they have called, they have intimidated, and they have turned the public service into something less than professional. And so if you are asking the political class of people to remove the head of DOE, it would never happen. Yeah. Because the head of DOE is no threat to them. They will tell, up, tell the head of DOE what to do instead of the head of DOE advising them what to do. That is how it works. So until and unless we get rid of this system and Brother Pat um, has actually spoke about the need for us to decolonize Belize, a part of the decolonization process, Brother Will, is to get rid of the construct where the political classes have gone from the issue of making policies to the issue of managing. That is where the problem lies. That is where the scope, that is where the scope for corruption comes in. Can't argue with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, All sir. Right. Yeah, so like Brother Judge mentioned, I know we, you know, we, we we're kind of ambitious for the topics, but um, I, I definitely want to hear um one more, um, and that has to do with the BTL smart issue. So if anyone, you gentlemen, can um, come in on that issue for us, just to give people a, a better understanding I, I of this thing, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. The expert about Patrick and so on the BTL smart issue, but I just find it kind of like amazing, or I don't know if amazing is the correct word, but I find it kind of intriguing then that they use the 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 the, the one name for Toledo district the honorable Oscar Ricana who is an indigenous man himself yeah. and the CEO who is an indigenous man right they push this smart thing through for the ministry yeah right mm -hmm. that that to me it says something right when you look at everything that's taking place in that is so and how the the engineering and effort everything Place. I just find it strange that they choose that military or rural development way. Make we start there with the smart, with swapping to the for yeah. smart there. Yeah, you know, it seems like almost seems like you are rewarded you know, all this stuff with come coffee collect. <laughs> right, and, and that's what everybody on the ground is saying. You know, the, the sentiment is that again, BTL is government owned, or well, government being majority shareholder. Um, and then we are switching over to another company, and this is just the beginning of it. And so when we have um, the Ministry for um, Labour then switching over, we know that the future, in the future, the entire government jobs will be switched over. And I asked the, some of the guys at CETA there, they said, why didn't CETA um, stick to the, having that contract when it comes to the purchasing of the Microsoft um, stuff? And they were like, well, oh, you know, from even from the UDP days, um, that had to be contracted out, right? And so uh, everything was in the making, you know, it's just a matter of how the money swap hand now. But. Yeah, um, well, got you, brother George, you got you. No, 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 you got it, brother Pat. Uh, I, I just want to make uh, just one comment there, but uh, uh, I want to hear from you, brother Pat, because you, I, I think to some extent, well, definitely you understand the, the political machinations and yeah. the economic side of it. I have a philosophical comment to make. 
the truth is that um, BPL is what we call an anomaly, right? In the sense that it's a um, quasi-government entity in the private sector, competing with other private sector entities. Yeah. It can't continue this way, Belize. At some point, it has to be fixed. And fixing it is not to sell BTL as is again. From the time of Intelco, you know, we were tossing around the idea of retaining all the infrastructure of BTL, Belize. Everything infrastructure wise, all the towers, all the landlines, the fiber optics coming into the country, all of that. Maintain that as a statutory body, yes. But then privatize Digicel on its own as a service provider, right? Mm -hmm. Internet service provider and cell phone provider, Digicel. Fully like smart, like in Telco. We could have still have one in Telco, one smart, and one Digicel. Fully private, all leasing the infrastructure from the government of Belize. So the statutory body would have had one guaranteed income stream to pay back the whole over half a billion dollars with the Barogan and have one accommodation agreement mess we up with that uh, yeah. inflating the cost of that company. But it can be fixed. It needs to be fixed. The, the, the issue with SMART, that thing must be corrected, party leader. Yeah, for real, we, we have to call that, that the fix. This is the most blatant yeah. instance of nepotism it's been done where you could see clearly mark lizaraga is no manuel vasquez you see how manuel vasquez resigned from the central bank of Belize because he knew he got that job on merit johnny may think he did get one good old pup or range you know supporter but when you on merit judge know you deserve the job you don't need to make nobody tell you how to do anything we want to bring your integrity into question you see, so if Mark Lizaraga was anything like Manuel Vasquez, he should have resigned instead of the eat back and the choke up and the talk like Wally, you know, instead of lying with me the roar before the election, you know, the Senate days, something like Wally Pussycat. Now, they me you know, they defend all of their things were indefensible. Yeah. But at the ending of it, this could have never happened under my UDP government because they wrong. This could only have happened under one Johnny Bersenia, PUP government, and our Kari Musa or Jules Spatter or something. Then I may make Ashcroft and Johnny come up. Because Ashcroft and Johnny, they come up, right? Yeah. You know, Michael Ashcroft might say, I know one it. Well, a company where you control one it. Because that would enter then. Got some company where they control some lawyer, secretary, as directors of the company. But that, uh, for the lawyer, secretary name, then they, but that for then the control companies. I could not get it twisted. This thing is wrong. Smart with this Microsoft thing, again, they are not even a Microsoft service provider. So they well, can't give any of the support services. So when you add back the value of the support services where BTL may have give, BTL did offer the best deal to the government. They may have three year deal, they never want one year deal because they sent out the bid asking for three years. So this thing was like the the CEO, and that is the chief executive officer of BTM, Mr. Tessico. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a job for too long, Belize. <laughs> Just because like, uh, he got to explain yeah. that this thing is set up for smart, you see. So his letter to his management team, they explained that this the deck was stuck against BTL. This thing was gone to smart, and it ended up with smart. Can we allow this to continue? I, I no way, man. Eight months in this man administration. I mean, this is I thought the environment ball, but the way this bunch come in, they're they're the power that for we in Belize, we just entrust it on them. Yeah. But each prime minister successively have been more emboldened with this power. If it tests we if you see how much they could get away with because they know we did a hazardous corruption at this point. Nobody will be penalized. So People on Bureau, but you blow over like more libraries. Well, I, I I wanted to to and what I'll say kind of relate to what you're saying there, Brother Pat. But I know the show is probably winding down, and I wanted yeah. to ask um Brother Marcel for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And in those three minutes, in those three minutes, I want to say I want to start by saying don't lose sight of the big picture two things are happening in Belize in terms of the big picture there's a class war happening 
and a part of that class bar is for big business and those who speak for big business which is the government of Belize to basically crush the union movement and anybody and anything that speaks for workers and so when you see what has happened to PSU and what has happened to the BNTU where Belizeans are accustomed to basically standing on the sideline and having the PSU and the BNTU etc lobby for changes this crowd basically said why don't you rebel against that 10 percent salary cut you know where we are though we want to use the same machinery and the same narrative that we have used in terms of getting into power on november the 11 2020 and so what they have done they have basically vilified the bntu and the psu to say things bad things bad and we have to cut we have to cut so i know that we hate the union but we love uno more Belize. but nothing could have been further from the truth when they did that it has taken the wind out of the sails of both the bntu and the psu and so what we are left with now who is fighting the big giant of the government of belize on behalf of big business are the stevedores under 100 stevedores now the union for 100 stevedores the fight at 200 the number and so 200. well 200 stevedores yeah but, but, but thanks for but you know it's a nominal amount of people fighting this colossus that is funded by taxpayers but that speaks for mr cashcraft you see and so don't lose sight of what we are up against when the benefit begin to share brother marcel mm -hmm. your wife and my sister and my sister-in-law and brother pat wife not the no detail board you know the plan on port board mm -hmm. when the benefits start to share the working class people are not a part of the benefits yeah. and so i would say to our people remember that this is a game and for 60 years people are talking about we got 40 years of independence for 60 years since self-government the people of Belize has not won who have won are the political the classes and the business classes connected to them and this dynamic have to change the second thing I would want to say is that corruption has their consequences when you look on belize and you look on belize relative to the caribbean there was a beautiful article written by um miss adele ramos some years ago and basically what she was saying is that economies basically meander up and down but when you look at the economy of belize and when you look at the performances and indicators when you look at poverty Belize was headed in a downward trajectory yeah. and some of the countries that were at the bottom with us, Jamaica and some of the Eastern Caribbean islands, they were headed in the other direction. And that is disturbing, you know why? Because Belize continues to apply the same formula of the get rich, I call it the get rich quick scheme. What you haven't heard from the current government is anything about Onkak. Remember, they were very gung-ho about Onkak. Mm. And suddenly, suddenly you have an attorney general, I believe, and you have a an expert gentleman, <laughs> the technical one, who basically said, we got to eat one and don't worry about Onkak. We have to eat one Onkak. <laughs> I think that people remember the UP lottery. You either buy lottery, the legitimate way where you buy a bolido yeah. and in built into that bolido is taxing so you have to buy the pup luxury where you're right behind the bolido ticket so what the pups are saying to you don't worry about anything 
Leopards do not change their spots, and zebras do not change their stripes. We want to bring the PUP lottery approach to corruption, which is enabling corruption. So I want to say to all people generally that unless and until we understand what corruption truly is in terms of how it impacts we and how it has made our people not only poor but destitute destitute that when you can't even find the basics of survival we're not the talk about house and we're not the talk about education this is when you can't find food for sustain yourself this is where we have been headed i have seen nothing i have seen nothing under the new administration i had no expectations really i would be lying if i said that i thought that it could have been a better day but I am not disappointed. I see this as an opportunity for people to understand that your standard of living and your quality of life is not going to improve. Because there's a formula that we have that is not set up to benefit anybody. I have a brother in California, and you know what he said to me? And I never forget this. He said, believes that a country we put together for no work. You can understand that? If you know that like you go on Land Rover, um, brother Marcel and brother Pat and brother Will, but in this land over you got a Ford engine, and you got a Nissan transmission, and you have other parts for the belong for the vehicle. It's a country, Belize is a country, but the moving parts are not meant yeah, to, 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 to synchro mesh. You know, a mesh, yeah. and until we deconstruct, until we deconstruct and put Belize on the right foot, it's not going to happen. I don't want to leave a, 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 a bad message tonight, but I just want to leave the reality. You will recall, and I'll end on this one, mm. you will recall that the previous administration has been in for 12 plus years. And ever since we have been getting them to do one thing, at the end of every year, you're supposed to submit, parliamentarians are su supposed to submit a statement of where they are economically. Yeah. You know that not happen? And it not happened for good reasons. And the reason is that they could never tell the truth in terms of their assets. Yeah. You check them going in, check their bank books, if you could find it, and you check their assets going in, and you check it coming out. But it has consequences. And the consequence is, for every dollar we are keep from the people and country of Belize, you have to run somebody in a poverty, you did deny somebody education. Yeah. You did deny somebody decent housing and a decent quality of life. So, Brother Marcel and my colleague, you know, I have to let Brother Marcel for kind of tie it up. But that's what I want to say, um, that corruption is not just about complaining. But we have to talk about corruption in terms of its impact and how to fix this place. You know? So, I'll, I'll pardon that one. All right. Definitely. Definitely. Um... I just want to read two of the um, comments left um, on the on Facebook post. It says, one, the Constitution still separates um, public officer um, into categories of 106 and 107 officers. And the, aban the abandon abandoning of that um, permanent secretary post opened the door for political mis mismanagement of the, politicals, of the public service, which by extension has led to increase in corruption. Also, um, there's another one that says, I like the narrative, but to be honest, these unions should have been growing the NTUCB, especially by inviting the workers in the informal economy, but they fell asleep on the wheels, right? But there's still time to correct um, that oversight. So just to get in some comments um, from the viewers. Um, but definitely, I want to give um, Brother Will a last word there before we close. Uh, very short last word, Brother Will. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, again, I think that we as the BPP and the Vibe I have never, like, have so many Belizeans coming up to me and say this is our time. Yeah. That no. And yeah. I just want to remind Belizeans it's not the BPP time, it's all of us time. Belizean time. Because we can't do this thing without their help. We, we can't we can be have people say, oh, the BPP time. No, we want you to be part of the movement so that together we could change this. Yeah. You know, so I, 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 you don't have to be a frontliner. You could be behind the scenes. It can be realized that people, 
you know, people are afraid to be victimized. People are afraid, but we can still help each other so that together we can change this country. So, the legions, whether you're in the front or in the back, you've got to be a part of the team so that we can bring change to this country. All right. And um, Brother Patrick, in closing words? Well, I just want to say, Belize, we have to keep our eye on the ball, right? Then guys feel like they got five years, but nothing is guaranteed. The political climate change day to day, week to week, month to month. So although they may seem awesome and mighty right now, eight, nine months after the elections, you know, another couple of months, you never know, man. You just never know. Yeah. They, they, then they be slapped with COVID. The Latin ships we got people were sick on it. We never get to discuss COVID tonight, which yeah. is a pity. But all in things that's uh, at play, Belize, where um, we, we have to be keep an eye on the ball because the 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 fact is that you see Mr. Ashcroft gone down south in a COVID, the scout to all their land. A lot of things that happen where they say right now, while well, Lenga, we don't worry about COVID so much. Yeah. They, Every day things they happen, appointments they get made, contracts they give out. So we can't allow ourselves to take where I are for the ball. We have to hold this new government to task. They came in, said they want to be better than the last government. We not see that yet. We have to hold them foot to the fire. All right. And um, Brother Judge, any final words? Anil? Yeah, um, my final word is that um, I think that we, I want to say we, I mean, believe generally. We left governance of this country to the politicians. But I think that we have to realize that our role should not only be expressed from election day and election time. And I think kind of identifying with what Brother Pat has said, that we have to stay engaged. And staying engaged means that we have to track our interests and where we believe that our interest is not being attended and where we believe that injury is being brought to our way of life through corruption and neglect, I think that we have to ask our people to remember that there's a third way. Yeah. And that third way means that citizenship power has to come back to the fore. People should recall that in 1984, when the PUPs lost for the first time, you know, when they lose, because civil society was very strong. And civil society blew the whistle on George Price. And they blew the whistle on corruption. And I believe that we have to do everything in our power to say that it's not only a political solution, but there's also a citizenship solution. And that means mobilizing for the right reasons. Good, good, good. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with me tonight, you know, on the Everyday People Show um, here in Punta Grada Town. You know, um, it's been a pleasure. I know the time ran up on us. So definitely we have to organize um, something else. And the people viewing um, online, I want to thank you for being here with us, you know, sharing with us as, as we move along. And, of course, um, make sure that you share this message, share this message to the rest of Belize, you know. Yeah, um, like and yeah. Yep, I have it on Facebook, I have it on YouTube. Yep. Box it them, YouTube them. That's send right. Share it around so we can get the word around because we want to ensure that you understand what's happening in Belize, right? So we don't look at it only on one side. But I want to thank you again, gentlemen. I'll say good night. Um, viewers, again, good night. And I'll see you guys next week.